Amen. Well, once again, good morning. Welcome to In His Presence Church here in Niagara Falls. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, Labor Day, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, I'm just honored that uh, Pastor Maria has allowed me to share this uh, this word with you guys today. Sort of a um, piggybacking what she preached last week. If you didn't uh, hear the message last week, she preached on a message called The Fruits and the Roots. Um, powerful message, and she talked about the... Uh, uh, the spirit of rejection, which is uh, uh, the root of all kinds of stuff, depression, suicide, um, just a, a variance of things. She talked about the uh, acts of the flesh. What are the uh, acts of the flesh? She talked about the gifts of the spirit. Um, all that stuff. Um, is last week's message. I don't want to go through it. But today, I, I believe that God has a message uh, for us for the now. Amen? For the now. Um, as, as we get started, I'm going to give you two scriptures. I'm going to go ahead and reference them out right now. Uh, and then I'm going to keep referring to them back and forth throughout the message. And the first one is out of the book of Matthew, chapter 24, 42, and 44. It says, Therefore... Keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come, so that you must also be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you least expect it. When you least expect it. The Son of Man will come like a thief in the night when you least expect it. The second scripture that we need to find out, and we need to read, and uh, sort of store in our heart, is out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12. It says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That is Satan. That's Satan. That's what Pastor Maria was talking about, that Satan. You see, if, if you do not believe that Satan is alive and well, then you must have been living in a cave the last couple of weeks. You see the terrible events that are happening all over this country and, and you see people, you know, I, I don't want to get into, you know, gun control. I don't want to get into all that stuff. But we have to find the root cause of what's going on here. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago in Buffalo, a ter, 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 just horrific, horrific act of evil in the city of Buffalo. Um, but on that same weekend, there was a man in Houston that went into an Asian place of business and shot five people. It was a man in California they went into a church and she killed a doctor that was attending church last week pure evil walked in to a school in Uvalde Texas 19 children and two teachers the enemy is alive and well here in this country he's making it afraid for you to go get your hair cut He's making it afraid for you to go shopping for your groceries. He's making it afraid for you to go to church. And he's making it afraid for you to go to school. See, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but the enemy is relying on that fear because he comes to steal, to rob, and destroy, and to kill God's people. You see, our battle is not against each other. You know, you could blame guns, you could blame whatever. You have to blame, you have to do the root cause of what's happening here, and that is the devil. See, we want to discount the devil, because we, we, if we discount the devil, then maybe our sins aren't as bad as we think they are. See, I'm a sinner saved by grace. That's right. and, and we have to come to that realization that we are all sinners saved by grace. Without grace, where would we be? The title of my message this morning is The Axe is at the Root. The Axe is at the Root. And you get that from the scripture. It's out of the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 10. And the word of the Lord comes to us this morning in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, The axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown in the fire. Every tree that does not produce good fruit. You see, we look at that and go, well, he's talking about, he's talking about trees. No, I'm talking about us. I'm talking about God's people. 
rooted. In Colossians 2, 6 and 7, the word of the Lord comes to us in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. So then, just as you, look to your left, look to your right, look behind you, look in front of you. You, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. That's the roots that are in each and every one of us believers. The roots are firmly planted in what? In the word of God. The root of each and every one of us is Jesus Christ. Webster's Dictionary defines the root as the part of a plant that grows underground, gets water from the ground, and holds the plant in place. It's also defined as the cause or the source of something, the root. We get the word root from a Greek word. It's called rizuo, which translates to become stable. When we are rooted in God, we are stable. See, the word of the Lord tells us when we're not rooted, we're like, like a reed blowing to and fro, back and forth, with no stability. That's why you see so many so-called Christians with one foot in the church and one foot out. One foot in the world, one foot in heaven. Not knowing which way to turn. One day, on Sunday, they're Christians, and Saturday, Friday. We have to be firmly rooted. Proverbs 12, 12. The wicked desire the stronghold of evildoers, but the root of the righteousness endures. The righteous will endure. The righteousness will endure. See, when we plant a plant, it's spring, and everybody's planting plants except for Pastor John. But everybody's planting plants, and, and you try to get that the plant just right. You put the soil, you work the soil, you put the chemicals, you put whatever it is you put in there, and you put it in there, you water it, and then you hope that it grows. And what causes the growth is that the, the root system digs way deep down into the soil. And as it digs into the soil, it pulls up all the nutrients from that soil. It gets its water. It gets its life. As believers, our root has to be planted deeply in the word of God. Amen. We cannot live a life of, as a believer without living the life through the word of God. If we do, we're just, if we don't, we're just like that hokey pokey that I preached at one time. You got one foot in, you got one foot out. I preached another message about what side of the fence are you leaning on? Pastor Linda and I, we had this friend He's no longer here. He's a pastor. And Sean said that he was so upset one day because he preached a message about, about faith and about coming to the Lord and about being on the right side. And he got mad because several people afterwards said, Pastor, how, how close to that line can I walk and still get to heaven? How close? to We should be so far away from that line, it's not even funny. As believers... In the book of Exodus, chapter 15, the book of Psalm, chapter 28, we get these scriptures about who is our God. Who is your God, Donna? April, who is your God? See, God is different to everybody. But he's the same God to all. He's big God to some. He's a small God to some. Depending on your circumstances, depending on your situation. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength. Believe me, I've needed strength these last couple of weeks. For some reason, I don't know, it was a father of seven, a grandfather of 12, great-grandfather of one. Just what had happened in Texas just dug at my soul. Yeah. And I've been, I've been to Uvalde, Texas. I have a friend that has relatives and family in Uvalde, Texas. I've been by that school. And, and to see evil at its worst, not, not in a war, but against our children, yeah. the most protected, or the, the ones that are supposed to be the most protected. What did Jesus say? You, you can't get into heaven unless you act like one of these. 
And you see an event like that where pure evil takes over. And, and then you see people talking about, oh, we got to take away guns and, and mental illness. And, and yeah, that all that may be true, but we're not here to debate that. What we're here to do, we're talking about the root cause of that. The root cause of what you saw in Uvalde, Texas, the root cause of what happened in Buffalo, New York, the root cause of what happened in Southern California, Texas, is not guns, it's not anger, it's not mental illness, it's the devil, it's pure, pure evil. We have to grasp that, we have to understand who the enemy is. See, we look at we look at the enemy as our neighbor. We look at the enemy as a white supremacist. We look at an enemy as a, a, a Russian. We look at enemies of the flesh. But the Bible says that our enemies are not flesh and blood. Our battle is against Satan. The root cause of everything that you see is Satan. He comes to steal, to rob, kill, and destroy. He comes to ruin our relationship with God. He comes to destroy who you are in God's eyes. He comes to instill fear in your heart. We need to pray for those children at that school in Texas. We need to pray for those people that was at, were at that Topps Market in Buffalo. Yeah. You talk about what they call that, PTSD? Can you imagine those children coming back and trying to have a normal life? How about the parents? As you kiss your children, as you hug them, you send them off to school, the safest place, and you see something like that, we look, we want to blame somebody. We want to blame something. We need to look at the root cause of what's going on. Satan, we need to... We need to claim Exodus 15 too. The Lord is my strength and my defense. But see, when you see these tragic events like what happens in Texas, you see these events that happen in Buffalo, the first thing you see from non-believers is where was your God? Where was your God? And it's very difficult to tell these non-believers that, that my God is sitting in heaven watching everything that's going on. But see, we have this thing called free will. Yes. See, and the enemy knows we have free will and he works at it, he works at it, he works at it to take us down to the point where what's good is bad, what's bad is good. We don't know good from e uh, evil. This world is so topsy-turvy and upside down that all of a sudden now in 2022, Christians are the enemy. Those that believe in God are now the enemy of the people. When the whole root cause of that is the enemy, Satan, is confusing us. He's the deceiver. He confuses. We need to get to the root cause of what's happening in our lives. The Lord is my strength. And my shield, it says in Psalms 28, verse 7, my heart trusts in him and he helps me. He helps me. I'm 70 years old. Okay. You look 90. Yeah, thank you. I'm 70 years old. And you, you've heard it before. I said, if I would have known I would have lived this long, I would have taken way better care of myself. But... I should have been dead probably about a hundred times. I shouldn't really be here. So when I see this, the Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusts in him and he helps me, I claim this scripture. He's brought me through traffic accidents, drug overdoses, just, it's just situations of, that most people wouldn't have survived. He's always watched over me. Where some of my friends didn't make, make it this far. I was allowed to get this far for a reason. Amen. See, I truly believe that God's word, when it says, For I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. Plan, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in a future. I believe that's on every one of us. Yeah. But we have to claim it. 
You know, then right after that said, and those that call on me and seek me will find me. See, we want the blessing. We want, we want God to bless us. We want peace and joy, but we don't want to have to work for it. You know, I had a pastor friend of mine told me, you know, it's so easy to be evil. It's, it takes no work to be evil. All you have to do is wake up in the morning. See, because it's in us. It's inherently in us. But to be a Christian, to be a righteous person, to be a follower of God, you need to work on that. Because it goes against the flesh. Yeah. Pastor Maria said last week, the flesh and the spirit are war, at war. And you have to work at it. You know, I look out here, I see all these beautiful faces, I see all these beautiful people. You know, all, all our hair is all did up. Makeup is all nice. Got your eyeballs all. What you guys look like about five hours ago? Hair all matted. Crunchy stuff in your eyeball. Breath that would make a dragon run. Morning! Oh, it's food. It takes work. You know, I mean, you guys are so beautiful, but it takes work. Trust me. I know. <laughs> you know, you just don't get up in the morning like these. You know, one of the things I really like is these, uh, uh, these new things. That, oh, this is a movie starlet without makeup. You ever see those things? And they show them without makeup. And, and you know, uh, they still look good even without the makeup, but they just look even better with it. And, and you know, we need to work on... How we look, but we need to work on how we act. Yes. yes. You know, this morning, I was not, I was not feeling it this morning. You know, Grandpa, can I vent? Yes. Hey, Facebook, can I vent? Grandpa, Grandpa was a grandpa this weekend, had an eight-year-old autistic kid staying with him for two days. So in two days, Grandpa's got probably about 29 minutes of sleep. <laughs> and I'm tired from chasing, you know, the eight-year-old autistic kid has so much energy. She would figure out a way to put a little cage and a little circle, and he could do the energy of my whole house. This kid, he just, he doesn't know how to walk. He just... <laughs> and, and we have this little game that we play. It's like, uh, I call it, no David. <laughs> no David. And it starts, you know, from he wakes up in the morning and he gives me that little smile. And so he grandpa's heart melts and he comes over, he grabs my beard and, and then he takes me over to the refrigerator. We start the no David game. Out comes the ice cream. No, no David. Out comes sodas. No David. Out come, I don't even know he eats it. Out comes cheese. Out comes everything in the refrigerator is coming out. Eggs. Bacon. Whatever's in the freezer now starts coming out. Vegetables. And every time, no David. And he puts it on the table. And it's no David. No David. No David. And sometimes, as believers, we need to get to the root cause of what's causing all of our problems. And we need to tell that enemy, no, David. No, Satan. Yeah, no, Satan. See, sometimes one of the things we talk about David is that he does not know the name, the, the word no. He doesn't know what no means. Some of us don't know what no means. We need to tell Satan, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to get involved in that relationship. No, I'm not going to do that. The root cause of all of everything that we're going through is the enemy. We need to put the axe to that. We need to take the axe that is at the root of the tree, and we need to chop every tree down that is not bearing fruit. Pastor Marie asked a question last week. Are you bearing fruit? And just not any fruit. I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Patience. Did I hit a nerve? Certainly with me. I have none. If I had a million dollars for every time I heard that, I'd have like 60 trillion zillion gazillion dollars. You need more patience. 
And believe me, don't pray for patience. You know, don't pray. I prayed for patience. And it put, I got put in situations where I <laughs> don't pray for patience. You don't want. You ask for, Pastor Maria called it the will of God. The will of God. But we need the fruits of the Spirit. And we need to start working on, you know, we, we all have the ability to be patient. But we're not. We all have the ability not to get angry, but we do. You know, uh, how do I put this gently? At one time, I was an angry person. Don't know why. Well, yeah, I know why. The root cause. And I had to work on my anger. Is that the first, my first reaction to some but he getting angry with me was me to get angry back. And even worse. If I felt like I was being attacked, I would attack back, but even worse. And it took me many, 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 many years to scale back my anger to work on, on that anger issue. Some of us are just, well, that's just who I am. You know, I have this neighbor that, that her and I, we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. And to me, we talk about mental health, there's some mental issues here. And so when something happens and she goes off and, uh, and goes off on herself, being herself, you know, I hear, well, oh, that's just her. She is, that's just her, just ignore her, it'll go away. Just ignore it, it'll go away. <clears throat> And then I think back two weeks ago at the events that happened in Buffalo when the young man that perpetrated that act was taken into a mental health facility and checked out and let go and they said, ah, don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. And that's the attitude that we believers say, oh, don't worry about it. We need to start protecting our children. Oh, don't worry about it. I need to protect my family. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you need to worry about it. You need to watch your kids. You need to watch what your kids are doing on the Internet. You need to watch what your kids are doing uh, when they go on Facebook and all these websites. Do you know where, they're, where they are? Do you know what they're doing? And we wonder why this world is so upside down and so crazy. And, and, and it's like, oh, that's just, they're just being kids, Pastor. Right before I retired, a very good friend of mine, John, was on the night watch, gets a robbery call at a restaurant in the town of Dublin. His partner shows up, three teenagers had taken over this restaurant to do a robbery. They take her hostage. My friend John shows up as the backup. They come bursting out of the restaurant. They shoot him seven times and kill him. There's a pursuit. There's a chase. They catch these three kids. The oldest one's 18. The other two are 17. As they do the interview, finds out the three of them are from the same area, but they met through the church youth group. They met at a church, they were in the same youth group together, and they would get together after church and they would play this game called um, <coughs> Grand Theft Auto, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. They got this idea at 16, 17, 18 years old to do these takeover robberies. And they did 10 of them in our area. On the 10th one, my friend John got killed. How does three kids that meet at church end up with this horrific act. What's the root cause? Satan. Satan comes to steal, to rob, to kill, and destroy. And we as believers have to understand that our battle is not against flesh and blood. 
Your battle isn't against Democrats. It's not against Republicans. It's not against conservatives. It's not against liberals. It's not against white people. It's not against black people. It's not against Mexican people. It's against the devil and the principalities of darkness. And we need to stop this crap. We need to stop this stuff that's going on, and we need to come together as a people. Believers have to start it. Yes. If believers can't do it, how do we expect the rest of the world to do it? That's right. Amen. You know, every time that there's an incident, oh, my thoughts and prayers. My thoughts and prayers go out. And it's very important that our thoughts and prayers go out. But you know, there has to be action. In salvation, it's great to come to the Lord, but there has to be action. The action in salvation is repentance. You have to repent. Second Chronicles chapter 6, if my people, look around, that's God's people, you're God's people. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, humility is a key. How did Jesus come? Humble. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek by face, not the justice of God, not the arm of God, but his face, the mercy and the grace. And then the most important one, and turn. Turn from their evil ways. And, and, and there's people that go, I, I don't have any evil ways. And, and we don't like to look at ourselves like that. But just ask your spouse. Ask your husband, ask your wife, ask your boyfriend, ask your girlfriend. Am I evil? Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, you're evil. I looked up evil in the dictionary, your picture was next to it. And, and, and but, really, I, I'm not, am I that bad? Oh yeah, yeah, you're that bad. But, 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 no, you're no motorboat, you're just bad. And, and we need to come to the realization that we are all sinners saved by grace. Yes. Yes. Grace and mercy is what are getting us through this. Because yes. the ax is at the root of the tree. And God is ready to strike down all those trees that aren't bearing fruit. Because yes. he's not playing around anymore. You see the events. I truly believe as an end times pastor that we are in those times spoken of in the book of Revelation. Yes. That Daniel sort of breezed on. The seven weeks of Daniel, six weeks have, have come already to fruition. There's one week left. That's in the book of Revelation. So when I tell you that the, the, the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night and we need to be prepared, you need to be prepared because the day of the Lord is coming. And God is going to tear down any tree that is not bearing fruit. We need to step back and we need to look at our life and we say, am I bearing good fruit? Am I bearing good fruit? What is that, Pastor? The fruits of the Spirit. The fruits, God bless you. The fruits of the Spirit. We need to get back into that word. We need to look up the fruits of the Spirit. And we need to go down that list. And we need to apply each and every one to ourselves. See, the believers have to start. We all complain about this country. We all complain about this world. We all complain about the situation. And then we just sit back in our churches, in our homes, and do absolutely nothing. It's time for God's people to stand up, to get off our behinds, and do what God has ordained you to do. Yes. To know God and to make Him known. See, for this very reason, I have appointed you that you may see my glory and you may shout it out to the world. It's up to you to tell the people how great God is. We sang a song, how great is my God? How great is your God? And does anybody know how great your God is? Believers, we cannot sit behind right now while stuff like that in Texas, stuff in Buffalo, while this goes on. And just say, oh, that's a shame. That's a crying shame. We need to stand up, we need to get mad, and we need to put blame where blame is due. It's not on a gun, it's not on a person, it's on the devil. And we, our war is against, not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness in the heavenlies, against Satan. Some of us need to understand that what's going on. 
This is not a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. And how do you fight a spiritual battle, Pastor? With spiritual weapons. The sword of the Word of God. The breastplate of righteousness. The day of the Lord is coming. And I don't want God's people, especially in this house, especially those on Facebook, especially those in Niagara Falls, to be caught unaware when Jesus suddenly appears in that sky and they go, oh, I didn't know that. Because you do know that the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. And we need to be prepared, we need to be ready, and we need to have the axe ready to chop down those trees that aren't producing fruit. It's time to start working, cultivating our root system. Anything, any weed, pull it out. The weed of jealousy, pull it out. The weed of sexual immorality, pour it out. The weed of addiction, pull it out. And then put your water in there, your little holy water, and sprinkle patience. Put a little bit of love in there. So that the root of the Christian could be firm. Because we're not doing a very good job, church. We are not doing a very good job. Pastors. Deacons. Assistant pastors. We need to start doing more. A couple of weeks ago I came and talked about the armor bearer system. How we need to lift up our pastors. Pastor Maria, Pastor Rose, the worship team. The Apostle Paul said, is there division among you? Is there division in this house? You can't have a divided house. You have to be united. And there's a uniting factor in this house, Pastor Maria. Like it or not. And I said something the last time I was here, and I don't know how it was received, but I'm going to say it again. Pastor Maria is our senior pastor. She's my pastor. She's your pastor. If you don't like it, there's 357 churches in this area you can go to, and Pastor Maria is only at one. So go. One of my favorite movies, Tombstone. You ever see Tombstone? Yeah. I love that movie. I don't know what. But my favorite scene is when they're driving out of town and, and the, the, the gang is sitting up in front of the thing and, and he says, well, we're leaving now. And the bad guy goes, bye. <laughs> and we're going to miss you, but bye. And, and, and I truly believe now, this is Pastor John talking, this is Pastor Rita. I believe, though, if you think that there's a problem in this church and you go to another church, there's going to be a problem in that church, too. And it isn't the problem in the church. It's you are the problem in the church. We take our, you know, I have a bunch of friends from California. They're all trying to get out of California because of the politics, the taxes, all that stuff. And they're all moving to the state of Idaho. They're moving to Idaho. You can say Idaho. <laughs> Who'd want to move to a place called Idaho? <laughs> and, and so they're all moving out of Idaho. And, and now Idaho used to be a, a really conservative state. But now they notice that their politics are starting to lean mm -hmm. a little bit the other direction. Right. And, they, and, they, and, and, and show you because the Idahos, they can't figure out that these idiots that are coming from California are bringing their politics with them. The same people that are leaving from the politics are bringing them to Idaho. And then I saw an article from the people in Portugal that had their arms open for the people in California. Now they have the clothes sign, stay home. Stay home. We don't want your politics. We don't want the stuff that's happening in California to happen here. What kind of representative, I'm from California. What kind of representative are we? What kind of representative are you of Niagara University? Of in his presence, or what's it called? In Christ the King. Knowledge. In his presence, church. We represent those people. We're part of the, we're part of the group. I'd say part of the clan, but that's, we're part of the group. Mm -hmm. 
I represent in his presence church wherever I go. You represent in his presence church. Plus you represent the Collins family. You represent Cheese family. The Blakes. We represent. We all represent somebody. We can't run solo bolo. You can't. You have to represent something. You have to belong to something. You have to be somebody. And that somebody, you choose who you're going to be. And there's two choices. Two choices. Two. Two. Two mints in one. Two choices. Good. Did I say that out loud? Good and evil. Wasn't that a commercial? Was it gum? I have to Google that. We have two choices in life. You could be good or you could be evil. You can't be both. But we try. We try. We try to walk that fine line as they, as they asked Pastor Sean. We try to get just on the fence. We have to have one foot in and one foot out. And God says, no more. Or as they say where I'm from, no mas. No mas. No more. The ax is at the root of the tree. And God is going to start chopping. He's going to start tearing down every tree that isn't producing spiritual fruit. So it's time for us to take a step back and to look and to see, am I producing fruit? Am I doing what God has instructed me to do? Or, as Pastor Maria said, am I doing my will? See, when, when we pray, the prayer is, your will be done, God. Yes. Not the will of John, but God's will. God's will. The axe is already at the root of the tree, and every tree that does not produce good fruit be cut down and throw up, thrown into the fire. We're going to go ahead and close with this in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15 through 20. This is for you, churches. This is for us in America, churches. This isn't for non-believers. This is for us in yes. church. Matthew 7, verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. 16. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do not do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? 17. Likewise, every good fruit, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do you realize that that's how you're, you're known? You're recognized by your fruit? By your fruit. Oh, she's so patient. Oh, she's, such, she's so kind. Rose is so loving. Pastor Maria is Pastor Maria. <laughs> just, just, she'll go away. Just, hey, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going away. No, she's not, she's not going away. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. I, at my house, I have, I don't know if you were here a couple weeks ago, I gave Pastor Maria a sword. Pastor Rose, you weren't here, but that's for you too. And I have a similar sword at my house. And I have it in a room. That every time I walk inside the room, my, my liquor closet. No, I'm just kidding. No, you do not. When I walk inside this room, I see the sword, I immediately pray for pastors. Pastor Maria, Pastor Rose, the worship team, Pastor Lou. Oh. <laughs> I pray, I pray for those people. I pray for their families. I mean, we've been at war the last couple of weeks, haven't we, pastors? And, and, and so whenever I see that thing, I, I go in that room a lot, I, I'm constantly praying. And I, and I 
And now I know why. What's happening with Pastor Maria, what's happening with Pastor Rose, what's happening with our worship team, what's happening. We need prayer. We need to cover these people with prayer. I mean, that's... I'm glad that I see that sword. I'm glad I pray for you, Pastor Maria. I'm glad I pray for you, Pastor Rose. Debbie, I'm glad. Because the battle is not ours. The battle is God's. So we have to ask. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. The book of 1 John says, you, you don't get because you don't ask. It's time for God's people to start planting good fruit. By your fruit, you will be recognized. Matthew 12, 33, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. What kind of tree are you? What kind of fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, are you bearing? The ax is at the root of the tree. And the day of the Lord is coming when you least expect it. You may not even get home today and the day of the Lord will be here. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. You could be barbecuing tomorrow. All of a sudden, whoosh, bratwurst are burning because you guys are gone. You know, this is, this is a, you know, we're not, yeah, we are. Yeah, I am. Wake up, church. Yeah. Wake up. We've been slumbering way too long. But well, they say, the honeymoon is over. It's time to get back to work. No more fake worshiping. No more fake praying. It's time for us to get serious. It's time for us to cover our pastors because they're going to war, people. There's a war going on, and some of us don't even realize that our pastors are at war. You know, it's not by a coincidence that when we begin to pray for our pastors, that Pastor Rose's family has issues. Pastor Maria's family has issues. Pastor John, he always has issues. Pastor Dave, it's not by coincidence that those things happen because when the enemy comes, he wants to steal, kill, rob, and destroy, and he goes to the top. He doesn't go to the bottom, he goes to the top. He takes out the leaders. So we need to cover our leaders. We need to pray for our leaders. <coughs> Pastor Ray, come. Pastor Rose, Debbie, come here. Everybody got a good look? Every chance. We need to cover our pastors. We need to cover them. If we have issues with them, we let it go. You know, as families, we, we always... I have seven sisters. Seven. But God was so good because he knew he saved the best for first. That was me. I'm the oldest. And I, I always said that once you have the best, that's why he just gave my dad seven girls. But you can't do better than that. Look. Anyway, we need to cover our pastors. My sisters fight like cats and dogs. They, they are always arguing. They are always fighting. I hate going over there because I got to jump right in there and fight with them. But in the end, if anybody goes against my family, whew, my seven sisters will be on you like a turd on a <laughs> toilet. Did I say that out loud? Like a poo-poo. That's how we need to be as family. We may have disagreements. You know, we may have disagreements with Pastor, but we back her. We may have disagreements with Pastor Rose, but we back her. We may have disagreements with Debbie, but we back them. 
Why? Because God put them in that position. God ordained them. And see how he did it? Did it by height. So right now what we're going to do, I'm going to have you guys stand. Out of respect for our pastors. We're going to go ahead and extend our hand. We're going to pray for our pastors. If you uh, pray in the spirit, if you, you pray in the spirit. But we want a covering on our pastors. We have to tell the enemy, no more. The enemy, no more. He has no authority in this place. Father, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, as armor bearers in this house of God. We come to you, Lord, on behalf of your servants, Lord, appointed by you. We come to you, Lord, and we just ask a hedge of protection upon them. Lord, we just ask that you bless them, their families, that you watch over them, that you protect them, Father God, that you love them. And Father, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, an anointing from the top of their head, Lord, to the very soles of the bottom of their feet. Watch over them. Send the ministering angels to be with them, Father God. Let your warriors be released, Father God, in this war that they are in. And we pray right now, Father God, that you bless these hands that minister, that you bless these feet, Father God, that deliver the good news. And right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus and everything that is within us, we pray for the power of heaven to be released in this place, on our pastors, on our worship team, on our ushers, on our sound, Lord, on our camera, we just release the power from heaven right now. And we just thank you, Lord, that you're watching over them. Place a hedge of protection upon this school. Place a hedge of protection upon this church. And place a hedge of protection upon this congregation. Father, we just thank you. We love you. And we just ask that you watch over our pastors in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor John. Welcome. It was a great message. Bye. Bye. Read this one here. You know, before we take up the Lord's tithes and our offerings, we have to know something. There is enough, would you guys agree that there is enough warfare and demonic activity out in that world that we don't need it in the house of the Lord? <clears throat> We don't need it in here. And when it comes in here, it causes strife and division and garbage and, do you know what I'm saying? We don't need it here. This is where we're supposed to be coming together as a collective group and we should feel safe, secure. We should know that our family has our back. You know, there's some families out there, they don't have each other's backs. And sometimes for reason, right? Sometimes for reason. But, you know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Remember that. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He will repay evil. He'll repay it. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. There's a lot of vengeance out there. And we can't be like that. Amen? Amen. The church is supposed to be a united front. And a house united stands, but a house divided falls. We've seen this. We've seen this. So, Father, we just lift up your tithes, our offerings, Father. We thank you, Lord. You love a cheerful giver. You don't want people giving out of hearts of complaint or they don't really want to give, but they feel forced to give. No one's forced to give. You want a cheerful giver. You want people that give with a good heart, with a cheerful heart, that they want to do it out of, out of goodness, the goodness in their heart, not a blessing, and out of obedience to your word. Everything, I pray everything that we do is out of obedience to your word and to you and to who you are and who you've called us to be. Help us be followers of Jesus Christ. Not followers of idols, not followers of people, not followers of this or that or this, whatever, whatever. 
groups. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to follow Jesus. And his word is our standard. And it's the only way we're going to know, Lord, right from wrong. But brethren, we got to stop aligning ourselves and agreeing with wrong things. <coughs> wrong things. Father, I pray that you would bless the giving today. That you would multiply seeds to the sowers. That you would continue to just keep blessing them, Father. Every day of their lives. That you would keep their homes safe, their, their checkbooks safe, their money safe, their life safe, their health, their families, their pets, everything, their vehicles, everything that belongs to them, Father. I pray that you would continue to protect and shield your people and cancel every assignment of Satan against this church in Jesus' mighty name. We loose the blessing and we boomerang any curse words back to the senders in Jesus' mighty name in hopes, Father, that they would fall to the cross, the foot of the cross, repent and pray and return back to you if they ever belong to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You know what? We're too late in the hour to be playing games. You know, people were playing games in the 70s. They were playing games in the 80s. They were playing games in the 60s. They were, they've been playing games for a long time. But we're too late in the hour to play games. It's too late <clears throat> in the hour. Don't play. Don't play. Amen. Amen. Bye, Justino.